الخير ليس مستغربا العم بصير سبعة أيام بشكل آخر Good afternoon and thank you for joining us on Future TV. I'm Linda Tamim and these are today's top stories. The Syndicate Coordination Committee holds its biggest demonstration yet in a day of rage against lawmakers studying the controversial wage scale. Saudi Ambassador to Lebanon Ali Awad Asiri and Tourism Minister Michel Faron announced that the Kingdom has lifted a travel ban to Lebanon after the security situation has improved in the country. And an explosion in a Turkish coal mine kills over 200 people. Public sector employees and teachers from across Lebanon have held their biggest demonstration yet in a day of rage against lawmakers studying the controversial wage scale. The demonstrators at Beirut Riyadh's Solah Square held placards with slogans urging MPs to stop procrastinating. They first gathered near the Beirut headquarters of the Association of Banks in Lebanon and then marched towards Nijme Square, the closest point to Parliament. Security forces have consequently blocked the roads in the area. Speakers at the demonstration, including head of Lebanon's teacher syndicate Nami Mahfouz and syndicate coordination committee chief Hanna Gharib, have vowed to remain on the streets until lawmakers approve the wage hike in accordance to its demands. Speaker Nabih Biri says a parliamentary session on the public sector wage scale will be held after May the 25th. If MPs fail to approve the hike, Biri told reporters that lawmakers will discuss each clause of the pay raise draft law, which was amended by a ministerial parliamentary committee this morning and in the evening session, which begins at 6 p.m. Biri also demanded that Syndicate Coordination Committee Chief Hanna Gharib apologize for remarks made about parliamentarians threatening court action if he refused. At a demonstration on Monday, Gharib said the SSC was facing thieves, not capitalists. Saudi Ambassador to Lebanon Ali Awad Asiri and Tourism Minister Michel Faraon have announced that the Kingdom lifted a travel ban to Lebanon after the security situation improved in the country. The announcement comes in light of a meeting between Asiri, Faraon and Interior Minister Nuhad Mashnouk at his ministry's headquarters in Hamra. Faraon and El Mashnouk stressed that the government will continue to implement the security plan, vowing to safeguard Saudi citizens in Lebanon. The March 14 Secretary General has voiced its support for now English managing editor Hanin Ghaddar, who was subject to a media campaign after she took part in a symposium at the Washington Institute for Near East Policy. The group said Ghaddar is being subjected to an irresponsible and unfair campaign. The March 14 coalition reiterated its support for the Special Tribunal for Lebanon, which is probing the assassination of former Prime Minister Rafi al-Hariri. It also called on the journalist accused by the SDL of revealing information about witnesses to show up to the court instead of wasting time giving statements that have nothing to do with media freedom. A conference entitled Building the Future Job Growth and Fairness in the Arab World has been held in the Jordanian capital of Amman, hosted by Prime Minister of Jordan Abdullah Ansour, Director General Abdul Latif Al Hamad of the Arab Fund of, for Economic and Social Development, and International Monetary Fund Managing Director Christine Lagarde. The conference's goal was to provide an opportunity for a regional policy dialogue among policymakers leading private and public sector executives and civil society representatives to reduce unemployment and raise standards of living. The uh, visit to the, uh, the camp yesterday was, was both heartbreaking and, uh, and um, also stimulating. Uh, why? Heartbreaking because there's a lot of misery, a lot of sorrow, a lot of people who would like to be home uh, rather than hosted thanks to the great hospitality of Jordan. It was also stimulating because people are inventing new business models almost on a daily basis under the very, very uh, able management of the, the camp management. Now, many institutions are trying to help. Uh, I know that some countries are helping as well. The mission of the IMF is not to um, support the refugees. The, the UN uh, Refugees Commission is in charge of that. What we are doing is trying to adjust um, the program that we have negotiated with uh, the Jordanian authorities to make sure that there is public spending available 
extra, if you will, uh, in order to cope with the hardship imposed upon the budget of Jordan by the refugee situation. The conference that we have organized uh, together with the Kingdom of Jordan and the Arab uh, Economic and uh, Development Fund is to really bring everybody together from the region to focus on how to transition from the hardship of the last three years now that the situation has stabilized a little bit to a period where there can be more growth, there can be more jobs. And it's not as if there was a magic recipe. Nobody has the magic recipe, but everybody has to put their efforts together, their new thinking hat on, to see what needs to be done. But nothing will go without solid macroeconomic fundamentals and a job market that functions and is open to young people and to women. Well, both uh, Lebanon and Jordan are two countries that are particularly affected by uh, the cost of uh, hosting Syrian refugees. First of all, though, I should say that the real cost of the what is happening in Syria is the human tragedy of uh, Syrian people themselves but it is having an impact on neighboring countries and uh, uh, not just Lebanon and uh, Jordan but also Iraq to some extent Turkey and what the IMF can do is that uh, we have a program for example that we're supporting financially in the case of Jordan well in that program we can then ensure that the extra costs of dealing with the refugees are factored into the design of the program they're about 1% of uh, GDP in the case of uh, Jordan. In the case of Lebanon, where there's already over a million refugees in a small country, uh, obviously it has many consequences, uh, demographic, uh, social pressures, but also there's an economic cost uh, to the government. The government of Lebanon has uh, asked international support. The IMF in its own work has uh, also stressed the impact that this uh, cost is having on Lebanon and uh, encouraged all the donors to provide uh, financing. Some countries uh, have provided financing but I think it's fair to say that uh, what financing has been provided is, is relatively small in relation to the cost uh, that Lebanon is incurring and the generosity that the Lebanese people are showing uh, to their uh, neighbors. I think this conference is an excellent opportunity to bring together uh, ministers and governors as well as civil society organizations, business, uh, private sector uh, to discuss how three and a half years after the start of what was called the Arab Spring, the economies of the region can now move from stabilizing their economies to growth and from growth to jobs. Why are we so focused on it? Because without growth, you can't have macro stability that is uh, going to last. And without jobs, you can't have growth that is going to work. So you need jobs, you need growth, and you need fairness. Because one of the reasons that people came onto the street is because they did not feel that their societies were giving the benefits in a fair way, that everybody had the same chance to benefit from growth. So this conference brings people together to share the experience, not only from within the region, but also by bringing experts from other other parts of the world and we have had a day and a half of very good discussions, uh, sometimes disagreement, uh, intensive dialogue and I hope that from this each country will be able to take away some ideas, some actions, some practical things that they can do that will improve the prospects for moving to job creating growth and that will respond to the aspirations of the young people who are getting increasingly impatient to see a better future for themselves. Coming up next, Nigeria's government says it is ready to hold talks with Boko Haram to secure the release of the hundreds of girls abducted from their school. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Lakhtar Brahimi has announced his resignation from his position as the UN Arab League envoy for Syria, largely out of frustration at Syrian President Bashar al-Assad's plans to hold an election in June. Speaking at a joint press conference with Brahimi in New York, UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon said the decision will be effective from May the, the 31st. Addressing the media at the UN, Brahimi expressed regret he had been unable to help the Syrian people. Saudi Crown Prince Salman bin Abdulaziz has called for stronger military cooperation between the United States and Gulf monarchies, whose security he said is threatened. The prince made the remarks during a meeting in the Saudi city of Jeddah between visiting U.S. Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel and ministers from the Gulf Cooperation Council. Salman said among the issues of concern were a political crisis in some Arab states 
as well as attempts to acquire weapons of mass destruction and meddling of certain states in the internal affairs of others, in an apparent reference to Iran, he voiced hope that cooperation continues with the United States, stressing historic and strategic relations between Washington and GCC countries have contributed to cementing security and stability in the region. U.S. officials say the U.S. GCC meeting was expected to offer Hegel a chance to underscore U.S. security commitments in the Middle East and to reinforce the United States' unstinting policy of preventing Iran from acquiring a nuclear weapon and further destabilizing the region. And now for news around the world, in brief, Saudi Arabia has invited Iran's foreign minister to visit Riyadh, hinting at the possibility of a thaw between the two bitter rivals whose struggle for influence is evident in conflicts throughout the region. Speaking at a news conference on Tuesday, Foreign Minister Prince Saud al Faisal did not say when the invitation to Muhammad Javad Zarif has been made. An explosion and fire in a Turkish coal mine has killed 205 people and the country's energy minister says the death toll could rise with hundreds more still trapped. Another 76 people were injured and hospitalized. 787 workers were inside the mine when the blast hit a power unit. The minister says most of the deaths were the result of carbon monoxide poisoning. Suspected Al-Qaeda gunmen simultaneously attacked two army positions in southern Yemen, sparking clashes that killed an aide to the defense minister, nine other soldiers and 13 jihadists. The attacks come five days, er days after Defense Minister Mohammad Nasser Ahmad and two senior security officers survived an ambush as they returned from the south, where the army is pursuing a fortnight-long campaign to clear the area of Al-Qaeda elements. Nigeria's government says it is ready to hold talks with Boko Haram to secure the release of more than 200 girls abducted from their school last month. Special Duties Minister Taminu Turaki told reporters the window of negotiation is still open. Turaki, who last year headed a committee pursuing an amnesty pact with some Boko Haram fighters, said Nigeria has always been willing to dialogue with the insurgents. The minister's statements came a day after the Boko Haram released a video in which its leader, Abu Bakar Shikau, said the girls abducted last month from a secondary school will be released once Nigeria frees all the Boko Haram prisoners it has in its custody. But that proposal was rejected by the Nigerian government. Swedish filmmaker Malik Benjeloul, who shot to fame with his Oscar-winning documentary, Searching for Sugar Man, has died age 36. Swedish police says the director died in the capital of Stockholm on Tuesday, but would not specify where his body was found or the cause of his death. Reports say no crime was suspected in relation to the death. Benjelul's award in 2013 was the first time a Swedish film had won an Oscar since 1984. Searching for Sugar Man tells the story of how U.S. singer Sixto Rodriguez became a superstar in South Africa without knowing about it. Benjelul came across the story about Rodriguez, who had disappeared from public life in the United States, but developed an unlikely cult following among white liberals in South Africa during a trip to Cape Town. The film also won several other prizes, including a British BAFTA for Best Documentary. This marks the end of our bulletin for today. Now for a reminder of our top stories. The Syndicate Coordination Committee holds its biggest demonstration yet in a day of rage against lawmakers studying the controversial wage scale. Saudi Ambassador to Lebanon Ali Awad Asiri and Tourism Minister Michel Faraon announced that the Kingdom has lifted a travel ban to Lebanon after the security situation has improved in the country. And an explosion in a Turkish coal mine kills over 200 people. Those are today's headlines from us here at Future Television. I'm Lena Tzimim, wishing you all a very nice evening. لا أستغفر. العم بسير سبع أيام بشكل آخر.